well as we're gaining an experienced player that we we know extremely well and that uh, had a great season for us last year. He's a great human being as well, a great football player. So just adding depth to our to our lineup um, at the right time as well. I mean, uh, so you know uh, we're we're definitely excited to have him back. Nope. No, he, he'll he'll catch on. He'll uh, he's done a good job since he's been here. Uh, getting together with Mike and looking at the playbook from camp and studying the play the plays that we've called already this year and getting more reacclimated. But uh, not a lot has changed. Just uh, you know, uh, there is wrinkles that everybody needs to learn and, and he needs to learn. But uh, he'll be just fine. Well, I, I think the biggest thing Davis did was, you know, run the offense efficiently, uh, played within himself, made plays when they were there to be made. Um, you know, and he has a special skill set and ability. Um, you know, he competes like, like I've said before. I mean, there's not too many guys that have been around that can be harder than that guy and prepare. So, uh, but I thought just playing within himself, playing within the confines of the offense, you know, that's what we, what the expectation was from him, and he did that extremely well. And that's impressive seeing the lack of experience he came into those three games with. You know, he, he did such a great job of doing that, and that's hard for a young quarterback. So, uh, you know, my hat's off to him for, for, for holding it down for us uh, while Cody was out. And uh, he's a m much better quarterback now four weeks after that experience than he was going in, and we already knew he was pretty damn good. Yeah, I think we're going to have to look to see, you know, uh, where we put them. Um, but, uh, you know, keeping people comfortable is a good thing. But we can definitely, we move our receivers around anyways. So it doesn't necessarily matter where they line up to start. You know, we're, we're going to move them around quite a bit. So, uh the good thing about Austin is he does have familiarity with our offense. It hasn't changed much since he left. So uh, just him getting more, again, acclimated to it. You know, in order to try to make a team down south, you've got to kind of lose the information. But uh, I'll tell you what, when you watch the cut-ups again and you go through the playbook, I'm sure it came back pretty fast. And by watching him today, I'd say it did. So that's, that's a good thing for us. Was it difficult to wait? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, but it was a smart thing to do. Uh, this is probably the most games I've missed in my career. So obviously standing on the sideline hurts. But when your team wins four games, when you're out, uh, it's nice because you don't feel rushed to get back. You, you can get back under your own uh, power, under your own when you feel good. And we had the conversation going into this is as soon as I felt good enough to play, then uh, that was going to be the plan. But uh, I'm really proud of the way that Davis and Caleb stepped up, particularly Davis and how he came in uh, with not very much experience. And, you know, even for me as a veteran guy, there's things I, I learned watching him play. And so I think the more that uh, you can watch somebody else do it, I think the more you can learn. Did you know when the injury occurred that? Uh, I didn't uh, because I've, I've never had a soft tissue issue in my career. So when it happened, I, I've heard war stories about people who've had hamstring issues. Uh, the initial diagnosis wasn't very good, but um, my wife, who's my secret weapon, and the, the staff here, uh, they did a tremendous job of getting me back and feeling good and feeling confident in it again. And so just to be out there with the guys and throw the ball and joke around and take some reps uh, it was a lot of fun for me. And I felt like a, a rookie or a kid again, you know, just trying to reacquaintance myself to this team. Your wife, your She's a physical therapist, and uh, there's a lot of things that happen to me that I go through her. I trust her with anything more than the world, and so uh, when things happen to me and she gives me the green light, I feel very confident that I'm able to go out there and perform to the best, my best of my abilities. Uh, so we had constant communication, even though she's not here in Montreal, uh, throughout this entire injury process, and there's still a grind, and, and uh, he's still uphill battle that you got to go and perform and perform well and, and try and stay safe and healthy, but... Uh, there's a lot of things she does behind closed doors that I'm very thankful for. What's the biggest thing you have to uh, as a veteran, it's, it's not really getting in the flow of things. It's more having the confidence that uh, you're healthy and you can go out there and, and perform. And I think last week was big for me, just suiting up and being a part of the pregame and the, and the game and feeling like you're one play away from getting in the game uh, just helps you be mentally prepared. But I think when the game comes, adrenaline's going to be running high and uh, going to be confident uh, in what I've showed and my ability I've shown over the last two years here. And so just go out there and try and get back into a rhythm, back into the flow of things.
Uh, it was great to uh, see his smiling face and uh, see his beautiful family. Uh, you know, he kind of got uh, the short end of the stick in the NFL. And I told him selfishly, I'm extremely happy where he's at here in Montreal. But uh, we all would have loved for him to go down the NFL and tear it up because uh, he's an extremely talented wide receiver. But uh, selfishly, like I said, it's happy to have him back. And I'm excited just to see what he can do and, and come in. And, you know, Rambo's taken on his own uh, the last couple of weeks. And so uh, losing Tyson to injury was is big. But but being able to replace with Austin Mack uh, really kind of eased the pain a little bit. I <laughs> always uh, following him and uh, track in, and we, we stayed in contact throughout the entire training camp, and um, and so we, I just knew if, if anything happened, he was going to be back here. So it, it's always a good feeling, but I was rooting for him, and I was hopeful and wishful that he would go down there and tear the league up, but extremely thankful that uh, he's here with me and we can kind of re- relive the, uh, the glory days. Alexander set the bar pretty high. Are you up for the challenge? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, but... Uh, don't forget that this was a 5-0 and team as well before. So, yeah, so uh, it, it, he just did a great job of coming in and doing the unexpected and making the, you know, uncomfortable look comfortable. I told him, I was like, I was pretty jealous of the way that he made it look so damn easy. I'm like, for a young guy with not a great experience, I'm like, you came in and made it too damn easy. It took me five, six years to make it look as easy as you did. So uh, I, I was extremely proud of him, and we got a great relationship. We're really close, uh, and so we can go back and forth. And there's a lot of things when I was the guy before he even stepped foot on the field, I would ask him questions because he's got a great football mind, and uh, he, he's the next and upcoming crop of these great quarterbacks in the CFL, and we need those. We need great quarterbacks in this league because that's what makes leagues great, and uh, he's the next best crop in my personal opinion. I told him, uh, there's only one ball, and I can't cut it in five pieces and give everyone a piece, right? So it's a good problem to have, but also uh, to, to be able to understand that one night it might be your night. You might have go for 100. One night you might get one catch for six yards. But uh, we have a great receiving core. We have a great team where when things go bad or when things are stacked against us, nobody starts pointing fingers. And so I already know those guys in that room, if they're not getting the ball, they, they don't complain. I've seen it for two years. Uh, guys just come to work every day, and winning football games is, is all they care about. And uh, when you have a team like that, I think that's why you see a team playing as well as we are. Uh, surprise, no. Um... You know, I gave it my best shot and, uh, you know, politics plus, uh, you know, a few opportunities, you know, knowing my situation with my family, uh, it was really a no brainer. Uh, You know, they opened up with open arms and and stability. Uh, I got my second child on the way here in October and, you know, bouncing around, uh, you know, trying to find a home isn't, you know, isn't the best thing for them. So uh, I was really putting my family first in this situation and, uh, you know, just rocking out. Is this it for you in the NFL? Are you ready to move on? I'm ready to make that next step for sure. Uh, right now, we're, we're working with the team to make sure we can uh, dial in a long-term deal. And, uh, you know, once that's done, it, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in with Dallas. Was it difficult getting cut? Were you thinking that you had your place in the Falcons? Uh, I mean, it's always challenging. Uh, you know, you, you believe that you're a great player, and, you know, you hope that you can, you know, make things fixed. But, like I said, it's politics. Uh, you know, I can't, can't, you know, stuff I can't control. Uh, and it's out of my... Uh, it's out of my job description, but I gave him my best shot. It was a great experience, and uh, got to got to be around a lot of elite players, man. Got to meet Kirk Cousins, uh, Darnell Mooney, Drake London, a lot of those guys, man. I mean, elite players, and uh, learned a lot of things in these last few few months. How do you define politics in this case? Uh, I mean, it's a situation, right? You know, you you drafted guys. You're going to be guys that they're going to put on the field over a guy who's a journeyman. You know, I was undrafted in 2020. I uh, played a lot of games my rookie year, but dealt with injuries. Uh, regardless of that, you know, you're still that borderline kind of 53 guy. They bring in any other vet that was, uh, you know, brought in a few other vets while I was there. Um, politics, man. You know, it's out of my control. And the uh, best bet is to go reach out to, to, you know, their front office. How does it feel when you're catching ball from Cody? I mean, it's it's awesome, man. This is this is what I, I want to do. I want to play football. Uh, I want to compete at a high level, and this is pro football. It doesn't get any better than this. And uh, you know, to be around a city that opens you up with you know open arms uh, and support, uh, it's you know everything you can ask for. Well, is there a much more aware of what's happening in Montreal before you get the call? Or are you watching games? Yeah, I was trying to I was trying to keep up as much as possible. CFL, CFL Plus isn't the best in the states. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'll try, I'll try and get a few of them, but, uh, um, 
but yeah, you know, I definitely keep up in tabs with the guys. You know, uh, Tyler Sneed's one of my best best friends. Same as same with Cody. Um, you know, I knew they were down and injured, but they were keeping me on tabs. And, and, and Davis, man, a lot of prayers to him and his family. But he's been having a hell of a hell of a last four games. And uh, just to see, you know, everybody and, and see the newcomers like Rambo, um, a few other guys, and, and, and like Sean Lemon. I mean, it's just awesome. These are the guys. I love them. Uh, we went. We did something special last year, and that bond, you know, it's unbreakable. So it's a, it's been a, an easy transition coming back and getting with the guys. When you come in like this midstream, you have a game set. What, what's the biggest challenge? Uh, mentally, uh, you know, my world kind of just got flipped over uh, in a matter of days, uh, making a decision, uh, moving to Montreal, um, and now learning a new position and, and learning a whole new playbook. Uh, you know, the same as last year, but I learned it on the other side of the field. So now I'm trying to just, you know, get the little you know details down and get back into the groove of the Canadian Football League. How are you not uh, that early here and not the altitude? Say it again. How are you not that early here? The weather? I mean, hey, is you know, I'm like first day back. You know, I'm thinking it's gonna be nice and sunny. And of course, you know, it's nice little rain, but um, you know, you love it. Uh, like Coach Moss always preaches, you know, rain, snow, shine. It doesn't matter. We're gonna be out here working. What can you tell me about the injury? Types of things that you discuss. Uh, you know, that was basically uh, you know the determination of me being here or not. Uh, uh, like I said earlier, uh, uh, you know, my family was the first and foremost. You know, they were they were a big. Uh, big point into this decision being made and uh, he was able to make some uh, things happen and uh, you know now I'm able to be up here this early so uh, excited to finish off these last eight games with the team and uh, finish out dealing uh, getting this deal together when you see this team at nine and one with all they've had to overcome what are your thoughts oh man I mean we're we're good we're good as all get out and uh, you know just to show what our starters are but our depth and you know each each position uh, we take into that pride that next man up, and there isn't no drop off. And for them to be able to can keep that consistency, keep us at nine and one. Um, now it's time to keep, take it up to the next level, get back healthy, and then make sure we finish off this back stretch uh, really good. How much better does this team become now with Austin Mack in the line? Oh, I mean, you know what I bring to the game. Uh, y'all going to see it, but uh, uh, you know. I'm just, I'm excited to do what I do. I'm not going to put nothing out there, so there's no false expectations. But y'all know what I do, and I'm excited to go put that out there. Did Machocha pick up the tab? <laughs> hey, Danny, you picked up the tab, man. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. Nice to see you, Austin. Danny, Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, oui. Mais non, c'est parce qu'il faut le garder. Puis c'est la même chose avec Lua Luguet, parce qu'ils sont sous contrat. Alors si jamais euh, ils se font libérer, euh, mais c'est sûr que ce, ce chandail, ce numéro leur appartient. Si le, par contre le contrat était en échéance, bien probablement on va, on va le bouger. Mais le, le fait qu'il lui restait une deuxième année sur un contrat de deux ans, ça euh, sera vraiment un manque de respect de donner ce, ce numéro là à, à un autre joueur. Mac made it sound like there's a long-term deal on the horizon. Would you mm -hmm. care to comment? Uh, we don't have anything uh, as we speak. <laughs> on the horizon. Yeah, on the horizon, we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, where have we discussed? Uh, uh, the potential of uh, of, uh, of an extension? Yes. Do have um, have we concluded anything? No. He sounds like he's open for it. Yeah, and so am I. So so are the Montreal Alouettes. Est-ce qu'il y a un agent qui a rentré financier qui doit le ramener à ce moment-ci parce qu'il est quand même ça reste mal. Vous êtes capable de payer, vous aviez gardé de la place sur la masse salariale. Comment vous avez pu y en arriver à une entente? Mais euh, si jamais il y a une entente, on n'a pas besoin de, 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 de modifier le contrat actuel euh, de, de, de 2024. Euh, on peut l'adresser en 25, 26, 27, peut-être même 28. On verra. On verra. Mais c'est ça, c'est exactement. Puis euh, écoute, euh, chaque fois qu'on parle d'une extension, entente, c'est sûr qu'il faut mettre les, les paramètres. Euh, uh, sous la table, puis d'expliquer le, le, le contexte actuel, puis de bien comprendre qu'est-ce qu qu qui est disponible et qu'est-ce qui n'est pas disponible. Vu le timing de son arrivée, et la, la dimension de la faute, 
C'est un joueur que, qui connaît le système. C'est sûr qu'on va le bouger un petit peu parce que la, la personne qui a pris sa place au tout début de l'année, c'est Rambo. Puis les dernières semaines, il, du, il joue du gros football pour nous. Alors, euh, on, va, on va le bouger un petit peu, euh, que ce soit au côté court, que ce soit au côté large, que ce soit comme recevoir éloigné, recevoir serré. Euh, mais euh, Austin, euh, à part que c'est un, un excellent joueur de football, c'est quelqu'un qui est très intelligent. Alors, euh, la transition, ça devrait euh, bien aller. Quand on pense aux dernières années, même aux dernières décennies, là, quand, je veux dire, quand tous les receveurs vont être en santé, est-ce que tu te souviens d'avoir vu une brillante de receveurs et aussi... Euh... Mais il y avait des années ici qu'il y avait Ben Cahoon, il y avait S.J. Green, il y avait Richardson, il y avait... Euh, oui, euh, euh, oui, Watkins, oui, oui, je me rappelle parce que j'étais dans l'ouest du pays, puis... Je savais que ce n'était pas facile de, de les affronter. Mais, euh, écoute, est-ce que c'est un beau problème? C'est un beau problème. Mais euh, je, on attend qu'on va voir les cinq euh, qui sont disponibles. Oui, oui, oui. 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 Oui, oui, He's obviously going to he's gonna garner some attention from teams that we play. They're going to have to probably game plan us a little bit differently. And I guess by default that makes us a little bit better. But again, uh, <laughs> we just got to line up and just play the way we're capable of playing week in and week out. How often and how much are you talking about in that? We went back and forth, you know, we had a text here, a text there. I saw him at the ring ceremony, you know, where we kept in touch. And, uh, you know, he made it crystal clear. He goes, hey, Danny, if this works out, um, you know, I'm going to be excited. And if it doesn't work out, I'll be excited. So uh, when um, when he was let go, he, I mean, he called me right away. So I didn't have to wait for the wire, uh, get a status report or pick it up on social media. And, uh, and we talked about, you know, now what? He says, well, give me a couple of days. And it just worked out that I was heading out to, to Jacksonville to a training camp, uh, the Jacks training camp to go watch, you know, the um, uh, preseason game between Jacksonville and Tampa Bay because I wanted to watch the wall also play. And, um, and, and uh, you know, home for him is in Tampa. So we met halfway in Orlando and... Uh, Yeah, yeah, and we uh, we had lunch and uh, and here we are. Security in what sense? Well, with Cody, he revient. We know he's capable of playing constantly. Oui, oui, oui. Puis, uh, écoute, uh, ça fait plusieurs semaines que que Cody a pas joué. Alors, c'est sûr que nous, je suis ici, puis je le garde de près, puis. Uh, je souhaite qu'il va avoir une bonne semaine de pratique. Il ne faut, il faut pas oublier non plus que c'est la première fois que depuis la Coupe Break que les deux se trouvent sur le même terrain. Alors ce synchronisme, j'espère qu'on va le revoir assez vite. Puis, euh, puis si jamais on est capable de distribuer le ballon comme je pense qu'on devrait être capable, que ce soit dimanche ou dans les prochaines semaines, euh, écoute, pour quelqu'un qui a déjà coaché à l'attaque, qui a coaché des carrières puis des receveurs, Uh, c'est un beau problème.